Originally, the first transformer was trained by Google. I believe they coined the phrase transformer in their paper, uh, which was titled something like, Attention is all you need. Uh, then there was this company, OpenAI. They tra trained transformers as language models. There was much less question than answering. The model didn't have uh, labeled outputs, but instead predicted strings of text. They are responsible for GPT, GPT-2, and GPT-3. Anyway, GPT uh, was small, but GPT-2 and GPT-3 were larger. You could get all the weights for GPT-2, and this is something I did at the time. I also installed them on a Raspberry Pi and a Jetson Nano. GPT-3 was a model that you could not get the weights for. It was too large, but you could sign up on a waiting list and use the model as part of an online API. The problem with this is that OpenAI, the company behind the trained model, was very interested in monitoring what their model was being used for. Their model had 175 billion parameters. OpenAI also charged developers by the token to use their service. The charge was small, but for me, the fee and the hyper attention to all that the model was being used for ultimately was a negative thing. Uh, there was another model created at the 6 billion parameter mark. This model called GPT-J was still too large to download. Instead, there was provided an online service for the model. This API also costs by the token, but I personally found the service to be more acceptable. Uh, the service is called NeuroAI and the model is GPT-J. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer. Uh, GPT-J has 6 billion parameters. Additionally, it can be boiled down to a 12 gigabyte download. If you had a GPU that held 16 gigabyte images, you could conceivably run GPT-J at home. Uh, contrary to what I said earlier. Otherwise, GPT-J is available for experimentation at 6b.eluther.ai. This site allows you to try the model out. Uh, further investigation shows that NeuroAI is behind this website and that inv individuals can register with NeuroAI and establish an account. On the GPTJ site, there is a small, unassuming link to hub.getneuro.ai. If you are interested in using GPTJ, this is the thing to pay close attention to. I'm going to try not to mention the actual price in this video. It is a monthly subscription plus a charge for every token used. It seems to me to be pretty inexpensive. So I've gone over every GPT model that I could come that I could find. And what I finally come across is GPT-J, which is a 6 billion parameter model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this video some of the things that I do to uh, experiment with the model. There are many kinds of neural network Today I'm interested in an attention language model called GPT. This model is based on Google's attention model, but instead of Q&A, this is a language model. Explaining how a transformer model works is far beyond the scope of this example, but we will touch on how a language model works. Language models are trained on large bodies of text. The text is tokenized. This means it is converted to numbers. Uh, the text is duplicated. This is pictured here in the part of the diagram labeled batch. Then a mask is applied so that every row shows one new word. The model looks at every row and tries to predict the next word. That is how the model is trained. This is a simplified example. Here we're trying to get at exactly how the model is used. 
Um, in step one, you see there's a, a, a row that's labeled uh, good day, and EOL stands for end of line. And then in step two, um, the label remains good day with the EOL, and the word high in the fourth spot. That's meant to say that uh, the model has predicted the word high to be the first token to come after the end of line token. And then in step three, the model goes on to the fifth spot. Again, the row is labeled good day, end of line, and the model has predicted so far the words high and there and it, it'll go on to try to predict what goes in the sixth slot uh, and that's a simplified version for how uh, a GPT model which is like a language model how it predicts uh, sentences okay so what we're gonna do is in the background we're gonna show the model a lot of question and answer type text and then we show it a single question uh, at the end. And uh, then we wait for the model to reply to that question. Uh, the model that we're using is called GPT-J, and it has six billion parameters. It's not the biggest model that's ever been created, but it's not terribly small either. So here we go. Let's try this out. Um, this is the graphical user interface that uh, we put together for this uh, experiment. Uh, we have the text hi there. Uh, we press return and we wait a bit. And then it prints out some output. And what we're interested in, this line here that says human, do you like candy? is part of the question and answer uh, the body of questions and answers that we feed it before our uh, final question here where it says human hi there if you remember the input that we gave it was hi there so this is this line here and then the AI replies with the word hello and that's uh, that's the chatbot uh, task more or less for the model to reply in normal human text to our input so here we'll, we'll enter more text uh, how are you And uh, at this point, the model gets all of the output that it had before, including its last answer. And then after that, the human text, how are you, which you just saw me type. And then the uh, chatbot answers, finally, I am fine. And again, this is exactly the sort of reply that we would expect from a chatbot. Uh, so that's that.